Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of the lecture on the Corporation Code. This afternoon, we are going to discuss about uh, the Title IV powers of the corporation. Let me share my screen. Okay, Title IV, powers of corporations. So, actually, this is what we have been mentioning since uh, the first uh, two videos or first three videos. No, the uh, Section 36 of the Corporation Code enumerates the different powers of the corporation. For example, a corporation can sue and be sued under its name. No, the power of succession of the corporation. The corporation also has the power to adopt and use its corporate seal. It can also amend its articles of incorporation and to adopt a bylaws which is not contrary to law, etc. Okay, it can issue or sell shares of stocks to subscribers, to sell the treasury shares, etc., etc. Okay, it, it can also purchase property, no real or personal property under its name. It can enter into merger or consolidation, which we will discuss in details in the succeeding videos. It can also make reasonable donations. It can establish pension, retirement, other plans and to exercise other powers as may be essential or necessary to carry out its purpose or purposes as stated in the Articles of Incorporation. Now, in this video, we will not discuss everything which is provided for in your textbook or review materials. What we will be discussing only are those important concepts. Okay. Now, the corporation has the power to extend or shorten its corporate term, okay? So under the old corporation code, again, no, a corporation can exist for 50 years. Now, this 50 years can be extended or shortened no, by a majority vote of the board of directors and then a ratification at a meeting by two-thirds of the outstanding capital stock. Now, since the corporation will have to extend or shorten its corporate term. Now, it will give the dissenting stockholder you know, the uh, privilege to exercise its appraisal right. Now, appraisal right is the right of a stockholder who is not in agreement or who is dissenting or opposing the extension or shortening of the corporate term, which is why he can exercise his appraisal right. Meaning to say that the dissenting stockholder can demand reimbursement of or payment. No, the dissenting stockholder can demand from the corporation that it purchase um, his or her shares of stocks. Okay. In other words, class appraisal right is um, a way by which a stockholder can require the corporation to purchase back you know, its um, shares of stocks issued under his name. Okay. Now, the corporation can also increase or decrease capital stock. Now, it can also incur, create, or increase bonded indebtedness. Now, the first power there, increasing or decreasing capital stock, that is self-explanatory. No? Uh, you mean to say that you can, um, for example, uh, add some capital stock or you can subtract from the authorized capital stock. However, when you say increasing, oh, no, sorry, incurring, creating, or increasing bonded indebtedness, one, what do we mean by bonded indebtedness class? Now, bonded indebtedness means that, okay, the corporation would take out a loan and that this loan is secured. Now, the payment of the loan obtained by the corporation is secured by a corporate property or corporate asset. 
that is what you mean by bonded indebtedness. Now take note of the voting requirements before a board of before the corporation can increase or decrease the capital stock or incur, create, or increase bonded indebtedness. No, it is required that the board of directors will have to vote, no, or at um majority rather of the board of directors, and that it is coupled by a vote of two thirds of the outstand of the stockholders, or at least two thirds of the stockholders. Okay, so majority vote of the board of directors and um, with the concurrence of the vote of the stockholders representing at least two thirds of the outstanding capital stock. Now, class, take note that these voting requirements does not apply in case that the board will issue additional shares of stocks from the authorized capital stock. Now, it does not need the approval of the stockholders. What do we mean by this? Now, class, some corporations, di ba, under Section 13 of the Corporation Code, if you are incorporating or registering the corporation, you are required to, what? The treasurer is required to execute an affidavit, di ba? That at least 25% of the authorized capital stock has been subscribed and at least 25% of that subscription must be paid. Now, class, when you say uh, subscribe shares, no, um, it, it, it is very common that not all of the shares of stocks or the authorized capital stock has been subscribed. So with respect to the remaining shares of stocks, which has not been subscribed, the board no, can, can uh, issue the unissued shares so that it can be subscribed by other stockholders no, in the, uh, with the end view of increasing the shares of stocks of the corporation. Now, if the, board of the, if the board of directors will have to decide to issue additional shares out of the unissued shares of the corporation, then it does not need approval of the stockholders. There are several ways to increase or decrease the capital stock of the corporation. No, you can increase the number of shares. You can increase the par value of each share or both. Okay. Now, take note, class, that the approval of the Securities and Exchange Commission is required no, in the exercise of the power to increase or decrease the capital stock or incurring, creating, or increasing the bonded indebtedness. Take note also, class, that uh, one of the requirements no, in increasing the capital stock of a corporation is that there is a treasurer, uh, treasurer's affidavit stating that 25% of the increase in the capital stock was subscribed and at least 25% of the said amount or the said subscription has been paid in cash or property. Take note, class, again, that the basis of the 25% is the additional increase no, without the additional amount increased and not the total capital as increased. We have emphasized this when we discuss section 13, no, that the 25-25 threshold requirement in incorporation no, applies to the total or aggregate um, authorized capital stock. In this case, if you have increased or you are increasing the capital stock of the corporation, no, the requirement of the 25-25, no, 25% of the increase in the capital stock was subscribed and at least 25 of the said amount has been paid in cash or property refers to the additional amount increased. So, for example, the authorized capital stock is 1 million pesos and you increase that to another 1 million pesos. You have doubled the authorized capital stock. No? Or 1 million shares, rather. You have increased it to 2 million shares. Now, 
the basis of the 25% is not the 2 million shares, but only with respect to the increased amount or the additional amount, which is the other 1 million pesos and not 2 million or the entire 2 million pesos or the entire authorized capital stock as increased. Take note of that. Okay, class. The corporation has the power to sell or dispose all or substantially all of the corporate assets. Just take note of the voting requirements, majority vote of the board of directors, and then authorization by two-thirds of the of the uh, stockholders, no, of the of the of two-thirds of the stockholders rather or member, provided that in non-stock corporations where there are no members with voting rights, the vote of at least majority of the trustees will be sufficient for authorization. Okay. And that there be a meeting duly called for the purpose after written notice. The corporation can also acquire its own shares. For example, a, corpor uh, a, a corporation has issued its shares. Subsequent to that issuance, the corporation can take it back. Now, it has the power to reacquire or to take back or to purchase its own shares for a legitimate corporate purpose. As long as the corporation has the URE or the unrestricted retained earnings. Now, these are the circumstances which the corporation can what? Um, acquire its own shares to eliminate the fractional shares ar arising out of stock dividends or declaration of stock dividends to collect or compromise indebtedness in favor of the corporation to pay a dissenting or withdrawing stockholders pursuant to its appraisal right. Okay. So as long as these are the requisites of a valid exercise of the corporation acquiring its own shares, take note that the capital must not be impaired and that the purpose for the acquisition is for a legitimate and, and proper corporate purpose and that is the present, there is a presence of the URE, the unrestricted retained earnings, and that the corporation has acted in good faith, and that the conditions of the corporate affairs warrant it. Now, you remember, class, during our discussion of the articles of incorporation, that the articles of incorporation must include the primary and secondary purpose. And I promise you that. I will have to discuss with you now what is the relevance, why does the Articles of Incorporation need to what? state the primary and secondary purpose of the corporation. And this is the relevance that I am talking about. Now, the corporation has the power to invest its corporate funds in another corporation or business by a majority vote of the board of directors and ratification by two-thirds of the stockholders. Now, class, if the investment is reasonably necessary to accomplish the corporation's primary purpose, then the approval of the stockholders or members shall not be necessary. In other words, class, the ratification or the approval by the stockholders applies only when the board of directors is investing in the secondary purpose of the corporation as stated in the Articles of Incorporation. Now, in case that the board will have to invest its corporate funds in another corporation, meaning to say the corporation will dole out, will dole out its own money in order to put it in, in another corporation, then of course the stockholders can dissent against such corporate act and exercise his appraisal right. He wants out of the corporation Perhaps the, uh, the law would want to protect a, uh, the stockholders from something, you know, from the, the, the law would like to protect the stockholders from their investments because they would not want to be exposed if the corporation will have to dole out its corporate funds to another corporation or business. Remember, class, that um, purchase of stocks is a form of investment in which case the stockholders may not have in their mind no, uh, the investment of the corporate funds or their investment 
no, to another corporation or business, which is why the law allows them to exercise what is called as an appraisal rights. Now, the corporation has the power to declare dividend. Class, ano ba yung dividend? Dividend is a portion of the profit of the corporation which is set aside, declared, and ordered by the directors to be paid no, in rata or ratably to the stockholders on demand or at a fixed time. So class, in other words, dividend is the profit paid to the stockholders. We have different kinds of dividends. We have stock dividends, meaning to say that the stockholders will be paid the unissued shares or unissued additional shares of the authorized capital stock, or if it's a cash dividend or a property dividend, no, from the term itself, what will be paid as profits is in the form of cash or property. No, the property may include what? Real or personal property, a warehouse receipt, or shares of stocks of another corporation. Take note, class. No? That it is the board who has the power to declare what cash, property, or stock dividends. Class, okay, take note under section 43 regarding a delinquent stock. Now we will discuss how a stock can be declared as delinquent. Now when you say delinquent class, ito yung meron pang hindi na babayaran na balance nung subscription after call by the board of directors no or upon a, a specific date as stated in the articles of incorporation and in the certificate of stocks now class kapag delinquent na yung yung shares of stocks at nagdeclare ang company ng cash dividend or stock dividend no magkaiba ang treatment ng batas now ang sabi dito any cash dividend declared no on a delinquent stock shall be first applied to the unpaid balance on the subscription plus cost and expenses. That cost and expenses refers to the procedure by which the corporation has undergone in order to declare a stock as delinquent. Now, if you are a holder of stock dividend, then the cash, no, the cash dividend, no, uh, uh, sorry, again, if you are a holder of a stock dividend, no, it, the, the, the uh, distribution of the stock dividend will be withhold or will be withheld from the delinquent stockholder until he has, um, until his unpaid subscription is fully paid. So, pag ang dineclear ng corporation class stock dividend, hindi ibibigay sa iyo yung additional stocks in your favor. No, until unless and until that you have fully paid your subscription. Kasi class, bakit fully paid? Kasi class, when a stock is declared as delinquent, the entirety of the stock is now in legal default. Which is why, kinakailangan i-fully paid mo muna yung balance of the purchase price. You cannot just pay, for example, half of it or a quarter of it. The law requires that you have to fully paid so that hindi ka na magiging delinquent stockholder so take note of the difference of the different treatment rather of a cash dividend and a stock dividend in case that the stock the stockholder is delinquent in nature now class i want you to focus on the distinctions between a cash dividend and stock dividend class if there is one thing that I want you to remember under the powers of the corporation, that is the distinction that is flashed on your screen. Now, class, a cash dividend no, is part of the general fund while a stock dividend is part of the capital of the corporation. Now, class, if the board declares cash dividend, then there is an outlay of cash. No, you the, the the corporation have to dole out some sum of money, but on the other hand, in a stock dividend, there is no cash outlay. Now, a cash dividend is not subject to levy by corporate creditor, meaning to say that the creditors of the corporation cannot go after the cash dividend 
because the cash dividend belongs to the stockholder and not to the corporation. Okay. On the other hand, since a stock dividend is part of the capital of the corporation, then corporate creditors can go after them. Okay. Okay. A cash dividend class, take note of the fourth distinction. A cash dividend is declared only by the board of directors by or through a simple majority vote. Huh? Only the board no? or the, uh, the uh, concurrence of the stockholders is not required in the declaration of a cash dividend. On the other hand, a stock dividend can only be declared by the board and the stockholders representing at least two-thirds of the outstanding capital stock. Okay. If a cash dividend is received by the individual, it is subject to income tax because it is a profit or it is uh, an income. No, it is a gain. If received by the corporation, it is not subject to tax. On the other hand, a stock dividend, if declared, is, su is not subject to tax whether or not received by an individual or a corporation. Take note, class, that the board of... Okay, tapos tayo dito. Mukhang na ulit itong slide na to. Okay. A stock corporation is prohibited from... Re from Retaining surplus profit in excess of 100% of the paid-in capital stock. So class, just familiarize yourselves in the exceptions. Kasi as a general rule, a corporation no, may not retain surplus profit in excess of the 100% of the paid-in paid in capital stock. These are the requirements. Number one, when justified by definite corporate expansion projects, if the board deems fit that it is high time to expand its business, then the corporation can retain surplus profit in excess of the 100% of the paid-in capital. Why? Because that money can be used by the corporation in business growth or business expansion. Or when it is prohibited under any loan agreement, or when such retention is necessary under special circumstances. Now, class, I want you to understand the concept of ultra vires acts. No? Ultra vires acts refers to the acts which are not within the express, implied, or incidental powers of the corporation conferred by the corporation code or its articles of incorporation. In other words, class, ito yung kapangyarihan na hindi sakop ng kapangyarihan na ibinigay sa corporation. is is outside the express, implied, or incidental powers of the corporation. Or it may refer to those acts which are affected by corporate representatives who act without authority. Kasi class, no? usually ang isang corporate officer or corporate representative no, is armed with a secretary certificate. The secretary certificate will tell you what are the act or acts which are authorized or which are granted to a specific person. For example, secretary certificate for the president to execute affidavit of loss of title or secretary certificate which empowers a certain corporate representative to apply for um, utilities or to apply for an internet connection. Because class, again, a corporation should act by its representative, which is why class, know that if a particular corporate representative has acted outside of these particular powers granted to him, that act becomes ultra vires or those which are contrary to laws or public policy. Take note, class, of the status of an act which was, um, which was uh, uh, taken up, no? Or take note of this of the effect of the contract entered into, no? By a person who has no authority to represent the corporation, or by ultra virus act. What is the status of the contract? No, it is void 
the ball, but can be ratified by the corporation. Take note, class, when the contract or act is illegal in itself or per se, then it is wholly void, inexistent, and cannot be validated. No, kasi class, di ba, you learn this from the law and obligation and contracts that the difference between a void contract and a voidable contract is that a void contract does not exist in legal contemplation. But a voidable contract, no, is a valid contract until annulled. No, it is a valid contract until annulled. So, class, if a particular corporate representative has acted beyond the specific powers granted to him, the status of the contract is merely voidable and not void, meaning to say it can be ratified by the corporation. Okay. Now, class, take note that a corporation cannot guarantee a loan of another corporation or another individual. Tandaan nyo yan. You cannot see in the enumeration under Section 36, no, the, that the power is that the corporation is granted its power to guarantee or secure a loan, and that the violation of this prohibition renders the guarantee void and not voidable. So okay, this ends my presentation. No, uh, for the for Title Four powers of the corporation. See you again for the next episode. Thank you.